back to the reunion of 2015 at Senior National. We had a great reunion after that. San Antonio this summer went well. This week goes as well as that one did. I know I was happy there. I hope you were too. I can guarantee you one thing, it won't be 105 <laughs> on any day that we're here in Seattle. A couple people need to be introduced. Probably myself. Huh? I'm Dan McGallum, I'm Vice President of Program Operations. If you don't know me, please at some point just meet. Come up, introduce yourself. Let me shake your hand, shake mine. So we get to look each other in the eye. A couple people need to be introduced here, special people. One of them is both of them sitting right here in front of me. Uh, Deb Keane, she is our meat director, has been the meat director for I don't know how many meats here at this facility. Does a terrific job. We all her a great deal of thanks, and you'll hear from, from her a little bit later. And Mike Dunwoody, who is the facilities manager here, he also does a terrific job. And so Mike's got some things he wants to talk to you about a little bit later. So if you get a chance while you're here this week, make sure you go by and say thank you to those people because they have so much to do with making this all happen. Okay, our next job is to introduce the juries, but before we get to that, we gotta talk about something else. Thibodeau and Boudreau. They were preachers in Cajun country, Louisiana, Jefferson Parish, right in the heart of the country. They were from Mouton. One was preacher to Cajun Baptist, and one was the preacher to Cajun Evangelical Christian. Churches across the street from each other. They got along, they competed for parishioners, but for the most part, they worked together. And on this particular Tuesday morning, they were out early and they had just finished driving a big sign into the ground. And this sign read, the end is near. Turn yourself around before it's too late. You can still be saved. About that time, this guy comes by in a souped up Mustang, he sticks his head out the window, and made some very unkind comments about Cajun preachers. A few seconds go by, there's this terrible crash. Boutro turns to Thibodeau, he says, Tib, think we should reword our sign to read Bridge Out? <laughs> Ben Davis from uh, Memphis, athlete Simone Manuel, Stanford, official Jack Allender, Oregon, technical jury, uh, coach will be Matt Kedricks from Tennessee, athlete is Natalie Coughlin, Cal, and the official will be Robert Scandary from Colorado. So those are your juries. Hopefully we won't need their services, but if we do, they are on tap. One of the things I did want to mention is we do have drug testing at this meet. Uh, there will be testing on Thursday and Friday evening. It'll be random testing. So if you get an athlete picked, I guess you're just going to have to do what you can to uh, make sure that that process gets completed uh, appropriately. What else am I supposed to do? I don't know. Oh, the paper reduction plan. I don't know what that means. <laughs> the paper reduction plan means we're not going to cut down any trees, but virtually all the hard copies, things that you used to get at meets like this, you will get on your phone. Uh, they'll be sent to you. You'll get them very efficiently. Uh, and by the way, if you get a heat sheet that has the QR on the front, who, who can tell me what QR means? Something, something. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what it meant. Either. It means quick response. It's got that quick response code on the front of it. You can use that and use the quick response on your phone code, and it'll pull up all of the uh, forms that you need to fill out to do the meat evaluation here for you. Makes, makes it very simple. It helps us in making your meats better, so if you would be so kind as to fill out that information, we would really appreciate it. Uh, anything else for me? If not, I will turn it over to you. Not to me yet. You're up? Oh. Clark. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was going to go, you know, beauty before age, but go ahead. Andy, I didn't know you were that old. <laughs> 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 I can't even get into Boudreaux, but I can 
can uh, do this. Um, I'm Clark Hammon. I'm the meet referee for this uh, weekend, and uh, you're all be congratulated for being here, as well as your athletes. And obviously, as I look around, I see a lot of people I've seen before. Um, just like Dan said, the um, most important thing is that this competition is done fairly, uh, and it's for the benefit of the athletes and the goals that they've set and you've helped them set. And so I am available at any time for you to come up and ask me questions, give me suggestions, which I appreciate, um, or anything else that you see that you think I ought to know to make the competition better, smoother, and the like. Um, I want to introduce <coughs> the people that are the lead assigned people first, and they will stand up and wave or turn around and look. Um, but I wanted to mention them first to you. First is Jack Dowling and Mark McCall who are in the back. These are your two most important people when it comes to entries, disqualification, uh, DFSs, no-shows, anything administrative, anything that has to do with no paper. Um, Go Green uh, is what we tried to do about seven years ago, if you recall. And what we're just trying to do is reduce the number of trash cans that we have to constantly empty during meets, which can be somewhat significant. <coughs> The next group that I want to introduce to you is the chief judges who are really the workhorses on the meet and trying to make sure that every call that is made is right and correct and is properly vetted. Our lead is John Gagliaro, Julie Carpenter, Dave DiNardo, Ann Lieber, Jim Solens, our chief judges. Did I miss anybody? I always miss somebody. Sue Lormer. I know I was going to miss somebody. And Sue Lormer. One year I totally left out my starters. And you know what starters are? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I have like, let, I, they haven't stopped telling me, don't leave out the starters. Um, the deck referees are Dave Coddington, uh, Marilyn, du Marilyn Duman, Amy Hopperath, and Ron Van Poole. And then our starters are uh, team lead is Mary Jo Swally, Debbie Baldwin, Cecil Gordon, and Paul Maker. And our time trial referee is Don Hogarty. Um, and I would mention, for those that don't know, and I love to embarrass them, so it's more fun, but Cecil Gordon will be starting at the Olympics next summer. <laughs> but that's the end of it. No more going up to him. You're going to throw him off if you do. So, you know. um, but anyway, I, I, it's really a great testimony to all the hard work he's done over the years. Uh, warm-up procedures. There's going to be a posted warm-up procedure. It's just like it's always been. Um, it'll start um, whenever you come into the pool, but really it starts having assignments really an hour and a half before. Pace lanes, as you know, will always open up one first for pace, and then when we're about an hour and a half out, we open one and eight, um, and the rest is circle swimming. And then when we're an hour out, we'll start bleeding in the, print, uh, the sprints. Um, on Thursday, which is our 50, we will open up one of the sprint lanes from the other end so that you'll be able to go towards the start end just like the event will go. Um, that will be posted, but if you have any questions at any time, just let me know. Also, as you know, if you've been to these meets, there will be officials on deck available to you to ask questions, give suggestions. For example, if you think that we ought to open up another sprint, then go over to them and say, I think we'd like another one open. A lot of people are waiting. They'd like to you know, not sit out here and freeze to death. So feel free to go up to them for that. Um, or anything else you see that you think uh, they need to know about to make the venue safe and, and better. Um, we'll do flyover starts during this meet. Um, one of the things is we have high pads. Um, so once it's done, I know Omega will love me if I say get out over the top. Um, but if you want to, you can clear to the side. Just make sure it's prompt and make sure you're not touching the pad just in case it fires off. But either they can go either way out. Um, we will have a backstroke ledge available at the meet. Um, and I noticed just in looking at warm ups, we put one out there that there's apparently several swimmers that have never used it before. Um, so the protocol is going to be this when we're in the backstroke events, the official will put the backstroke ledge in. Before they do that, they will ask the swimmer, do you want to use the ledge? They will put it in, and then the, they will put it in on zero, which should be right at the waterline, and then the swimmer will adjust it to where they want it to be adjusted to. Now, by rule, that's four up and four down. 
not six down or six up. So just remind your athletes that it's only the designated numbers on it. Um, if it's if it's beyond that, and we see it, we're gonna we're gonna ask to move it before the race begins. The other thing that has to happen on that is the officials will step up to the edge of the pool because the athlete's toes must be in contact with the pad at the start. So if it's all on the ledge, then it's not a legal start. So they will go up, look, nine times out of 10, it's gonna be fine. They will stand up and step back a little from the edge so the swimmer doesn't feel like they're peering over them, and then the race will start. So I just wanna let you know the protocol in case uh, you wanna share that with your swimmers. Um, Timelines. You probably saw the one that's posted. Uh, we've had a couple of scratches, so for Thursday, we finish at 11.29 right now, subject to more scratches. On Friday, we cut off about 11 minutes, so now we're at 12.30. And on Sunday, Saturday, we are, are at 11.56. So we've lost, you know, anywhere from four to, to uh, 10 uh, minutes on the timelines already. Um, when we get this redone, I will repost it on the USA Swimming site underneath the event page. We will have copies and it will also be on the heat sheet like you're used to seeing. So you'll have that information. Um, the other thing that you'll, you're aware of if you've been out on the deck is we have the camera lines and um, we will have the TV. It will not be live, which makes my life a whole lot easier that I don't have to stop, go, stop, go. But we will have TV. Um, because of that, one of the things we will do is the officials will be counting the distance events. Uh, the counters are on poles, so they will be putting them in the water. And before we start the race, the official at the start end will ask your swimmer which side <coughs> they want the counter put in the water. And once they do it, they will signal the other end, and that's where the counter will be put. So let your swimmers know what that protocol is. It will make it easier for them. And somebody comes up and says, which side do you want the counter on? Um, not thinking that this will happen. I think I've had it once in all the national meets I've run. But if you do have an alternate for finals, um, I always say have them ready and have them there because we're not going to wait for an alternate to show up. We'd like them to be there when the race is ready to go in the bonus seat, and we will put them in. All right, change the slide. Scratch procedures, normal scratch procedures that we have at all national meets. Um, Jack's in the back of the room. Mark's in the back of the room. 15 minutes after this meeting, uh, the scratches will close. So if you have further scratches, please make them, make them before you leave the meeting. Once they leave the meeting, obviously, the scratch box and the scratches will be all done at full side. Um, Scratch deadline for prelims is every night at 6.30, 30 minutes after the start of the event. Um, we are aware of that, but it's been the same uh, as long as I've been working this. Um, scratches for finals. They will go to the admin referees. Um, the other thing is, as you know, our normal protocol is, if your swimmer intends to swim, they don't have to do anything. Just you know, look at the heat sheet for where they are, show up and swim. If they think they may not want to swim, they can declare an intention not to swim. That must be done within 30 minutes after the event is announced. And by the way, our announcers are Chris and Mike. Chris and Mike, stand up. And I'll just give a segue that if you have any particular names or bios or information um, that you think would help them, um, especially any names that you think are maybe difficult to state, would you please go by to them and give them the pronunci pronunciation and they will take care of it because I can't. Um, if you make that intention that you may not want to compete and you change your mind, you need to come back within 30 minutes of that swimmer's last swim in the preliminary section and indicate again to Jack and Mark that now I want to swim. If you do not, and all you did was an intention not to complete, you will, the swimmer will be scratched. So they have to come back and tell us they changed their mind and they want to compete. If they didn't scratch, they're scratched. Does anybody have a question on that? That's it is the other one? I've always done it that way. I learned something there every night.
If you do not come back, they will be in your seat. Isn't it nice to have 600 officials down in front of you? <laughs> you idiot, where have you been the last 10 years? You know, I always have to do one. That makes me more, you know, human. You're human. Okay. All right, the other thing you need to realize is my cell phone. Because that is the direct line of communication if you can't find me on that. It's on the need information, but it's also the following number. I'm doing this really slow. 205-910-5390. It's better to text me than to call me because in the noise of the pool, I will not hear it nine times out of 10, but I will look at my texts every once in a while. You gonna repeat that? I do that. 205-910-5390. <laughs> and if you can't find me, you can always go to Jack and Mark. All right, penalties. Um, normal standard penalties, if you have a no-show at prelims, they must uh, indicate their desire to swim, so they need to go see Jack and Mark, and we will try and alert the coaches if that happens. If they no-show at finals, and they don't have an exception that I approve, then they're out for the rest of the meet. Declared false starts, the same as we've always done them. Um, before the session begins, before the session begins, go to Jack or Mark at the admin table. After the session begins, I don't care when the DFS is going to happen, it may be two, you know, two events down, go to the deck referee that's on deck in charge of the time. We've got a protocol to make sure it gets caught and it goes through the system. I just don't want you to go to like six different places and it get lost in the, in the mail, so that's how we're gonna do it. Any questions on that? No relays at this meet. Distance uh, events are just like they always have been. Positive check-in. Um, also realize that the final heat of all the distance events will be swung, the final heat will be swung at night. And we will also do the alternate. Um, swim offs will be at 8th, 9th, 16th, 17th, 24th, 25th, and 26th. You can always judge his decision. So, you know, you don't have to necessarily swim off. You can flip a coin, you can do anything. But you must come once we call you and get with the deck referee and schedule a time or decide how you're gonna resolve that. We will not be doing any swim offs before finals. They will all be done in the morning. So just an FYI on that. I'm getting way too much chatter from the people in front of me here. <laughs> time trials. Um, we will have time trials and I'm gonna try and have them every day. Um, Obviously on Saturday with the distance, it's going to be tighter, but if I get a couple more scratches, it's going to, it's going to expand the time. So I'm going to leave that open right now, but I'll make sure I communicate to you about that. Um, time trials will open. Entries will open daily at 7.30 a.m. at the clerk course, and they will close one hour before the end of the preliminaries. Okay? Open at 7.30, clerk of course. The clerk of course is at the start end. If you've seen the ready room there, it's a small curtained room. It'll be just on the other side of that, all right? Is there a day you have to go for the distance? For yes, thank hour? you. I was getting that to the left. Thank you so much. Um, I'm looking at doing the distance on Thursday. It's our best day. Of course, with all the scratches that keep coming in, that changes, but I'm going to do it Thursday. So if you have an 800 or a mile, we'll do it on Thursday. Um, I normally only obviously add one. What, what most people in the room know who have been here before, um, we do time trials at most. I think we've gotten is an hour and a half. There's, there's part you know, practicality and there's part contractual obligations. So I will do anyone that wants to do a distance tomorrow after preliminaries. Right? Um, just a reminder, no debt changing. Also, no cameras in any of the bathrooms or any of the, you know, outside things where, where people might be uh, changing clothes. Let's, let's be smart about that. Yes. Um, Jack, do you have anything I need to tell them about? Uh, finals timelines. Oh, yeah. Um, we, we, even though we have TV, it's not going to be live, so we'll put up a finals timeline and post mm -hmm. it, and then we'll have um, some posted around the uh, venue. Um, the other thing is Sunday time trials for those that are staying. 
That event is going to be OME entries that will open tomorrow at 9 a.m. and close Saturday at 2 p.m. Um, additionally, the way it's working is there's a positive check-in that will start at 7.30 on Sunday. Um, the event actually starts at 9, right? And the preliminary timeline will be available Saturday night. Will you post that and also we'll put it up on the website? Yes. All right, good. Any questions? I know it buzzed through this. If anybody has any questions, especially some of our foreign athletes and their coaches, just come find me um, and ask and we'll try and uh, accommodate or answer whatever questions you have. Yeah, and, and especially if there's any issues with respect to um, foreign languages, um, English and anything like that that you think we ought to be aware of, um, just let us know and we'll try and find a solution to that as early as we can to make sure the communication lines are um, open and good. All right? Thank you very much. Good morning. Welcome. I just checked my AccuWeather and it will be raining in 27 minutes. So for those of you that are disappointed that it was dry today and sunny yesterday, I'm sorry, but we, we do have a cure for that. I am Deb, uh, Deb Keen, I'm the meet director for this event. Um, I will have my cell phone number posted on the bulletin board inside hospitality. And I will include Clark's number on that <laughs> little card. So if you need to reach me or you need to reach Clark, you can always go there and look at the wall for the number. Um, speaking of hospitality, the hospitality room is located at the lane eight side of the pool, right in between the uh, cup pool and the dive tank. You'll see it, it's labeled. Um, it will be open about 6.30 for coffee every morning and 7, 7.30 for breakfast and we'll roll uh, through the day and evening as, as needed and based on timeline. There is also an athlete lounge set up at the lane eight side, which is the west side of the pool, at the back corner, northwest corner of the dive tank. It's a room in there, there will be snacks and whatnot available for the athletes and they can just get away from the pool deck. The uh, meet will be streamed live in that room. The coaches and official social will be Thursday evening. That looks to be the best finals timeline and it will take place in this room. It will look a little bit different than it's set up now. Uh, we'd love to have you join us. We'll be featuring some Northwest wines and beers and some lovely appetizers. So that would be great if you could join us immediately following the finals. What is so amusing about that? Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, results will be posted at the lane one side of the start end of the pool on the wall. There will be one set of results posted there, and then there will be one set of re results posted in the lobby upstairs of the building for spectators. I don't need to say anything about Sunday time trials. Um, I will say something about medical. Um, Mike will deal with emergencies um, and minor injuries you can uh, visit a lifeguard, they have ice, they have band-aids, they can you know, treat anything minor. Um, every morning in the athlete lounge there will be a doctor available to, to do a sick call if any of your athletes have trouble during the night or they're not feeling well in the morning. Um, Dr. Julian Chen from the Pacific Medical Center will be there on uh, Thursday and Friday morning. She is a fac uh, family medicine doc. And on Saturday morning, we will have Dr. Ashley Hamilton, who is an osteopathic and internal medicine doc. <coughs> they will be there for about a couple hours, 7.30, 9.30, something like that, depending on, on need. So just have your athletes stop by there. Um, there will also be a doctor at the start of finals on Friday night and Saturday night. So again, if you if your athletes need to see someone, um, they will be available. Yes. Yes. Two questions. 
questions. Um, is this, are results going to be on e-mobile, and is there something we can do for Wi-Fi access? Um, yes, I'm getting to, well, Meet Mobile is a question for, yes, there will be Meet Mobile. Um, <laughs> there already. I mean, no results yet. No results yet, but um, <laughs> the betting windows are open. <laughs> there are three wireless networks in the facility. You can choose any one of the three when you, you'll see them once, like KC Parks, King County Parks, and something else that has to do with either King County or Parks. Um, any of those three will work, and you just click it, and then it will take you, or if you open up your browser, it will take you to a page where, where you have to accept the terms and conditions, but you don't have to log in or anything like that. So you just hit I accept, and then you'll, you'll be ready to go. Um, I'm going to say something about venue hours. We will open every morning at 6, and the pool will close every evening one hour after the completion of finals. Um, that does include Sunday. We will open at 6 a.m. Parking is first come, first serve. There will be some parking spaces that are blocked off. We ask that um, you and you guys aren't usually the issue, it's usually spectators, but we ask that you do not <coughs> move any of those barricades. Those are reserved for people like the United States, anti-doping and whatnot that have to have parking available to them close to the facility. Um, the whole lots around this facility are available and there is an overflow lot at the Little League right before you enter the facility. You'll see if they're selling Christmas trees there and there is quite a bit of overflow parking available there and it is free. And any questions? I think that's pretty much it. Oh, welcome. Really, really happy to have you all here. <laughs> this is the athlete lounge. And this is where results will be. Hello, I'm Mike, I'm the guy who cut down the whole forest. Sorry about that. If you, <laughs> I didn't get that memo. But if you don't use your copy, leave it on the chair. We uh, use these at all of our events, so uh, we will recycle that way. As um, Deb mentioned, if you if you have a problem on the deck that needs some basic first aid, you can see a lifeguard um, there in each of the lifeguard stations wearing a red shirt. Upstairs, your parents, or if you have to be upstairs, uh, just look at the receptions take care of, or he can take care of your issues there at the front counter in the middle of the lobby. We have uh, emergency phones. If you look on the, uh, oh, actually, we just go back to that map. Can go back one? I'll point out the two, the three, the two locations of emergency phones. <laughs> Here and there. On the, those are on the comp pool deck, and there's another one in the rec pool. Uh, if you use the rec pool for warm up, warm down, make sure your athlete doesn't dive. We have it um, signed, but it's a very shallow pool, so make sure no diving in that rec pool. Uh, we have automatic or AEDs, uh, one on the pool deck. I guess we just leave the pool diagram up. Annie, can you do that? Sorry. Here. And the second one is upstairs in the um, receptionist area, right behind her. Okay. We have uh, two spine boards. Uh, you can look at your maps and refer to those. If uh, there's quite a few of you here that have been through one of our evacuations, if the fire alarm goes off, schedule. <laughs> <laughs> this is when Deb starts growing. <laughs> he always happens at Deb's meet. This something. is going to be my one meet. But nothing are, happens. No. Oh, now they're going to be. There you go. <laughs> the fire alarm is a large, or is a loud honking noise. So if you hear that, just um, it's like school teachers. You guys get your athletes together. Don't wait for instructions. Um, have your athletes grab their bag if they're close to it. No one should stop to dress, but if they grab their bag, that might be helpful. And then head up uh, the nearest evacuation route outside the building. Uh, any athletes that are not dressed, we can handle. We'll bring them in through the front doors. We have a vestibule area where we're selling tickets. Staff will bring towels to that location for just the athletes. Everybody else needs to stand outside. And we actually have a lot of covered space, so make sure your pocket's full of money and you can 
buy some speedo items while you're out there. <laughs> oh yes, I'll, I'll go slow. So be very happy if we have the fire alarm. If anything gets pulled, we're going to check with those guys first. Uh, Re-entry point would then be through the front door. So if you go out a side door, don't wait on the side doors. We're going to keep them locked. You'll have to come to the front for re-entry if we evacuate the building. Um, parking, make sure that uh, your parents and yourselves don't park illegally. Uh, better way, please, because of some recent uh, situations in France that we know about, and then some more recent ones in LA, um, we're going to have a pretty good presence. So if you think, oh, hey, I'll just park there on the yellow curb, um, this would definitely not be the time to do it. So don't park on a yellow fire lane. Bad gamble. It's $280 a ticket, so you won't want to pay that. And um, tell your folks, uh, your parents, not to leave anything of value in their vehicles. And throwing a towel over a couple bags screams there's something valuable in there. And then I'll tell my story I always tell. The one lady a few years ago that told me, hey, I took everything out of my purse. It was empty. Okay, that's, that's the story. And half of you are thinking, well, what's wrong with that? Think about it. Uh, if it looks like it has value, your, your car might be the one that they... Um, they take a special interest in, but hopefully we won't have a problem with that. Um, comp pool, 78.5 degrees, and we have got the dive tank a little lower than we normally do. Helps the air quality. Dive tank's 81 degrees. So. Um, what about the pirate pool? Pirate pool probably is warmer, probably about 84, 85. I didn't get the, I didn't get it on that one. We can bring that one down. I'll check. I just didn't check before this meeting. We'll bring the air temperature down there too if it's real warm. Um, any questions for me? No. Have a good meet. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Annie White, USA Swimming. Um, just a couple things. Oh, oh, sorry. This was very important. Deb and I were both talking about who would talk about it. During the anthem each night. Oh, geez. Geez, the most important thing. Uh, We'll be turning off the house lights. They'll shutter closed. So they'll go off. We'll have underwater lights on, and there'll be some colored lights that add some light to the pool area. But the dive tank will still be, uh, there'll be athletes in the dive tank warming up, possibly. They should stop for the anthem, but if they don't, the lights, house lights will go off. So if you can help us with that, uh, warn the athletes each day. That'll be during the anthem. Uh, Freeland heats as well as uh, BC <coughs> heats will report behind the blocks, and the A heat will report to the last call room, which is on the lane eight side. It's the draped area right behind the right by hospitality. Um, we will do award ceremonies first through third place uh, immediately after the A finals for each race, um, and then the 18 and under awards will be presented on Friday before the meet starts uh, for Thursdays. And then on Saturday, we'll do Friday's events before the meet, um, and then Saturday's events after the conclusion of Saturday finals for the 18 and under. So um, if you have 18 and under athletes, if you can make sure that they're in that uh, last call area during those times, that would be great. Um, and I think Dan already mentioned this, we will have uh, drug testing. Uh, most of you should have received an email uh, regarding this, but we'll put all the information up on USA Swimming's website as well. Any questions for me? All right. Yep. <coughs> okay, thank you everyone for coming. Uh, before you leave, if somebody lost some glasses, you may want to check. Uh, I have them right up here. They look like prescription glasses, so. Okay, thank you everyone. Have a great meet. Looking forward to seeing you all.